Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Let's Move Austin. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel. I'm here with your host, Teresa Bastian. As always, hello. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. Hello there. Hello there. Listen, last time we talked about wire fraud, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm um, still got the willies about that one. But well, it shouldn't scare you. Just be careful. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it's just my my belief in humanity is a little bit tarnished when I hear of people doing that. But well, uh, yeah, and it's, that's fair. That's fair, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. This time we're talking about floodplains, whatever the heck that is. I don't even know what a floodplain is. So, uh, how does it affect me as a homeowner in Austin? Okay. And what is it like? What is a floodplain? Well, this is kind of an interesting topic, I think, because it not only applies to people who are thinking about buying new property, but that what I'm going to talk about today impacts everyone that already owns property in Austin. So potentially, yeah. because it is a potential, it is, it is a change that's happening to the city zoning code as it relates to floodplains. Okay. So a floodplain is like what, where water, where things can get flooded? <laughs> yeah. Anywhere um, there's a creek or, you know, Sometimes a creek, uh, yep. it's rated by the U.S. Um, as what its flooding risk is. Okay. Okay. And even if your property, maybe you've got a, you know, a parcel of land and there's a creek that kind of just cuts across the back corner. Yep. Well, some of your land may be considered in a floodplain. Got and it. we've got 25-year floodplains, 100-year floodplains, and 500-year floodplains. What does that mean? Like it hasn't flooded in 500 years? <laughs> well, Why I'm do they glad say? you asked. Okay, good. Um, a 25-year floodplain is the occurrence. It, there's all these probabilities. Yeah, explain. yeah. Okay. I can't explain all the way. Yeah, I yeah. just tell you that. I don't know. You know Give me the gist of it. What does it say? Basically, 25-year floodplain, it's got a 4% probability of flooding in any given year. Okay. That's pretty bad. Okay. Hundred year floodplain, you're down to one percent oh, okay, in a given year. Yeah. In a five hundred year floodplain, you're down to two tenths of a percent oh, of okay. flooding actually happening in every right. any given year. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. okay? Yeah. And it rates it in part based on the anticipated rainfall intensity for a twenty four hour storm. Oh, okay. So like a twenty five year floodplain. Hmm. It could flood in a 7.6 inches in, wow. a, in a 24 hours. Wow. But a 500 year, it would need 13.5 inches in 24 mm. hours to flood. Ooh. So yeah. uh, so the intensity of rain varies too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, totally. It feels, I feel like this conversation is moving towards an insurance conversation. Is it? Or is this? I'm is this glad you asked. Yeah. Because okay. if you're like, well, my house, it was built in the 50s. It's right. still there. There's no flooding. I've lived yeah. here two decades. Right. Who cares? Insurance companies care. And yeah, exactly. uh, I have had clients interested in homes before, like super interested. Like, mm. I don't care what it costs. I'll pay extra for insurance. Right. And I'll suggest, well, you know, but the, the home's in a floodplain. I'll say, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's gorgeous. It's on acreage. I, I love it too. Let's just call and get an insurance quote. And when it turns out it's an extra $800 a month, for insurance. What? Uh-huh. A month? True story. True story <laughs> on a property wow. that I worked with someone on. Yeah. Ooh, that's no I joke. suggested maybe we make that yeah. call before we go any further. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if a property has been rated in the 500-year floodplain, mm. insurance is, flood insurance isn't even required or it's very low. Yep. Let's say that same property is going to be recategorized as a hundred year floodplain. Right. Now you might be in a situation where flood insurance is required. It's definitely going to be more expensive. Yep. Yeah, and that's, that's Go can ahead. Affect, that can affect me right now, right? Like if I own the house and they re, re what do you call it? Rezone it? What do they recategorize? Re yeah. Recategorize it. My mm -hmm. insurance could go up the, the following month. Yes. Yes. It probably wouldn't go up to 800 because. Right, right. You know, but yeah, and it can wow. affect your end play on selling right. the home because right. a lot of buyers don't want to buy a house that's in a floodplain, especially a right. hundred or a twenty-five year. Right. So here's what's going on. So okay, so you understand the impact. It's a yep. now impact and a potential impact. Got it. Okay. Yep. So there's a study called Atlas 14, okay. and Atlas 14 studies rainfall, and so that's really. Uh, they're meteorologists and zoning people 
they explain Atlas 14 as like a redefinition of what a hundred year storm is. Mm. Okay. Okay. So <sighs> development is going to be regulated based on the new um, zoning. Mm -hmm. So maybe if it was say a five, arc, five acre parcel and a developer wanted to put some homes on there, mm. but now the back part of it is in that same creek they have to plan for, you know, much less covered area because it's going to have to be zoned for the new flood regulations. Right, right. So it, it really does impact a lot. Um, City of Austin is going, um, I'll just say there are about 3,600 buildings that will be added to the 100-year floodplain. So there's 3,600 people that own property in Austin right now that are expected to be negatively affected. Meaning I mean, they were on a 500 year flood. They're going to be basically and, upgraded uh, for like a higher yeah. risk of flooding. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Upgraded. Okay. okay. I guess yeah. maybe that would be a downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Affected negatively. <laughs> um, and how this comes up, if you um, aren't aware of this, or let's say if, if you're in one of those properties, they're mailing to those properties, they've done some public hearings. I would imagine if you own one of those properties, you're already in the process of finding out about it. But let's say you're a buyer and you see a lot for sale in North Central Austin and your dream is to you know, build a house there and it's priced ridiculously cheap. So you call your realtor and you say, oh my gosh, what's up with this property? Hmm. Before we get all excited, sadly, your realtor, who's me, I look it up on the floodplain and I can see it's one of those that's going to change. And uh, that's why it's priced aggressively uh, low. So if you don't work with a realtor that understands these zoning changes that are not, it's not rezoned yet, but it's one of the properties that will be. So in the year, if my client bought it, mm -hmm. has to submit plans for the city, plans on building a normal size house on it, he's going to be sadly disappointed. Now I could have closed on that property because he's a cash buyer. I could have closed on that property in 30 days and just walked away. Like do your diligence. Not my problem. Right. Right. But that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. So you have to, when there, you think like zoning changes, you know, who really cares, but it, it can matter on real life decisions for people in their property. Yeah. Wow. That's so good. Like these mm -hmm. are the nuances that I think most people, not even just most people, but I think even, I, I, I don't know, I, I will say most agents don't even think about this. I would say that. Well, I would agree, sadly, but um, <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, like I get, kind, as you know, Chris, I get kind of geeked out about knowing know. things I and know. there's actually, the city of Austin has a pretty decent um, uh, interactive map online yeah. where you can put in an address and see what your current flood rating is and the yeah. proposed change. So if anybody would like me to look it up for you, because I already downloaded mm. this, the software on my computer and it doesn't yeah. take me that long because I already know how to use it. Um, you wow. can message me with your property address. That's great. Um, especially if you're not in a big subdivision, okay? If you're in an older part of Austin, anywhere, you know, around Shoal Creek, around Onion Creek, you know, those are the properties that I've noticed firsthand mm -hmm. are the more likely to be affected. If you're, you know, three houses in and a block in a neighborhood that was all built in 2005, you're probably fine. I don't want to cause alarm where there doesn't need to be that. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to send me your address, I'll look it up for you and we can talk about options. Cool. Very good. Where do people do that? If people want to reach out to you and say, hey, Teresa. Probably for I'm this, it would be best to email me and okay. you can email me your address and just say, hey, can you run my flood risk for me? Um, and you can email Teresa at letsmoveaustin.com. Okay, perfect. And if they want to talk to you before they send you that, because they want, they don't want to be wire frauded. <laughs> they, don't be, they don't want to be we're not frauded. Any, we're not going to have any flood frauding. No, uh, yeah. My phone number, as always, 512-297-3442. You're welcome to call or text or awesome. you know, chat stuff. about flood risk. Thank you. you keep bringing us like all these great nuances of real estate. Like this is why I think technology won't replace the agent. There's just too many, there are too many variables that go into the real estate transaction. And I love that you keep bringing us all those nuances. So well, thanks. I love to up, stay on top of things for my clients. Keep up the great work. Keep geeking out and all that stuff. I, I like know, it. I know. It's embarrassing, <laughs> but it, it does matter. It's, it matters. And, and that's, that's awesome. All right. Well, cool. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.